welcome to the 2023 Volkswagen Golf GTI. This obviously needs no introduction, as the nameplate is coming up to its 50th anniversary in a couple of years. Yep, it's been around since the mid-1970s, and now in its 8th generation, it has had decades to perfect and evolve what is essentially the perfect hot hatch recipe. Let's not forget the Golf GTI was one of the pioneers of the hot hatch in the first place. The Golf GTI had a bit of a rough upbringing because in the beginning, uh, the, the Volkswagen bosses didn't actually want a performance model. It took a couple of engineers and pr the press and marketing department to put something together in the background without actually having approval because they saw the opportunity to offer customers something that was fast, practical and fun. So what's the latest model like then? Well, as you can see, it's a pretty conservative design. Even the wheels, they kind of look like they could be on a hybrid model because they're very aerodynamic um, and there's no crazy spoilers or, or big scoops in the front or anything like that. It's all very sleek and suave, which I guess has always been the way for the Golf GTI. There's been a few generations that have been a bit more outlandish and a bit louder than, than other generations, um, whereas this one I think is probably one of the most conservative yet. Obvious telltale signs, uh, the big front air intake, um, and then you can see some sort of oil cooler or something, transmission cooler behind there, and then a red stripe across the front uh, leading to the GTI badge. And then around at the back, it looks very, very conservative indeed. In fact, you wouldn't even know that this was a GTI apart from that badge in the middle and the two pea shooter exhausts out the sides there. Personally, I quite like this understated styling approach because um, you can blend in with the traffic. You don't stand out and, and draw attention to yourself. Under the bonnet, we've got a evolved version of the famed 2.0-litre turbo four-cylinder engine, which now produces 180 kilowatts and 370 newton meters. Now, that's not the most powerful hot hatch in the market, but you know, if you do want more power, there's always the Golf R. So this, the GTI is not really about absolute hardcore performance. It's more about practical performance and fun performance. I noticed inside there's a, uh, a boost gauge that you can show up, um, a real-time boost gauge, and it peaks out at about 2.1 bar. translates to about 30 psi which is quite high uh, for a factory you know and, and for something that's quite modest it's not a hardcore model it's just it's just a, a run-of-the-mill gti um, running at 30 psi it's pretty crazy lovely sports seats i like the two-tone look uh, with the gray there and then the red stitching and piping there to provide some contrast straight away you know this this is not a normal golf it's uh it's a bit more spicy than the, than the regular models just before we get into it i just want to show you something so when you start the car shut the door it's got comfort access seats and basically you know when you when you turn the car off the seat will go back a bit to let you out a bit easier and then, and then when you start it back up it, it brings it back forward automatically um, the problem i have with comfort access seats is if you've got a baby seat in the back uh the the seat will, will press up press up against that and basically try to crush the seat obviously there's a tolerance there and it will will stop moving um, but i've got my camera bag in there as well obviously i don't want my camera being crushed up against the uh, the back seat um, now most cars you can turn it off and in this you can turn it off too, but I can't figure out how to do it So you go into the touch screen um, seats and then convenient and en uh, convenient entry function driver's seat. Okay, turn it off Sorry, this function is currently unavailable. I don't know what sort of sequence you have to do this in I don't know if I've got an overriding mode that I've got automatically turned on or something I, I don't know um, but I've tried everything I've tried it in park tried it in neutral I've even tried getting off out of the seat because it's, you know maybe I thought that there was a sensor that recognizes that there was someone sitting here so I didn't want to it didn't want to change something I, I don't know but I can't figure out how to turn that off put it in drive it still won't turn off so if anyone knows how to do that out there please comment um, that'll be it'll be great for the future just so I know um, but anyway Apart from that, this is a, uh, it's a, it's a perfect little driver's cabin. Great driving position for starters, um, good steering wheel right at the, right at the chest, and then you can raise it and lower it, pull it in and out and all that sort of thing. Um, and then the seat has a wide range of adjustments, power seats on this model, 
Um, you can lower them right down. You can raise the front of it up a bit so you can have some under thigh support. Um, and then good, good side bolstering, as I said before, um, with, with great visibility too. So the Golf has always been, you know, known for its practicality and, and everyday driving usability. Um, and visibility is, is, is great. Um, the, the window seals are pretty high, um, but I am sitting quite low. Um, but you've got the little triangle windows in the corners there. They don't provide, you know, a good clear view of anything, but if something was there, uh, like a child or something like that, you would see them there. So if that was all blocked in, you just wouldn't see them at all. Whereas at least you've got a little bit of a, a peek there of what's going on through that, that A pillar. Being a Volkswagen, uh, the build quality is outstanding. Um, good use of materials too. So you've got this sort of soft rubbery stuff all across the dash. I don't know what you call this, honeycomb sort of carbon fiber type looking stuff across the, the, across the dash. And then this matte finish down around the center console. It feels nice. There are some areas that have got the typical scratchy elephant skin type plastic. Um, the glove box and all this lower lower uh, part of the center console and lower doors. But even here, it's got a nice soft padded bit, sort of fake leather across the, across, across the door trim, and then more of that matte finish paint uh, for those power window controls. Overall though, for, the, for this price point, I think it's a, uh, a very nice package. You wouldn't expect, you know, much better than this until you stepped into a, a premium model. Um, but even then, you know, some of the cheaper or the, the lower end, uh, BMWs, Audis, and Mercedes, they're pretty similar to this, to tell you the truth. They're not um, anything, you know, way way up above this. They're, they're quite similar. Um, a good test I like, well, not a test, but a, a good a, a check that, that I like to do is the, the pillar here. So bottom half of it is scratchy plastic, then the top half of it is it's kind of a textured plastic. It is still quite scratchy, um, but I like models that have, you know, a soft covering all the way down to the bottom because um, when you let the seatbelt go it doesn't smash and rattle into that scratchiness and then across the ceiling you've got a nice soft textured material um, this example has got a, a sunroof that does open with power adjustment as well you just roll your finger along the along the wipe pad there um, to open and close that's pretty cool as for the dashboard, um, new cars, as you've probably started to notice, are, you know, there's, there's fewer physical buttons and then more digital screens. I don't understand how it's, you know, it's perfectly fine to go playing around with this while you're driving, um, but then it's not okay to play with your phone or make a phone call. I'm not saying that you should be able to make a phone call, but I just don't believe you should be able to touch this either. Because um, it is quite distracting, not just in this car, but a lot of a lot of new model cars that have these huge screens that you can just sit there and not even focus on the road and you're just playing around in there and you're not even looking where you're going. Um, this screen is quite nice. It's very practical. I love the home screen area here. Um, so you can just go through and pick what app you like. And then, and then there's heaps of vehicle settings to choose from and an interior as well. You've got the status area, which is where you can turn the stop start off. Um, if you want to do that, I, I usually turn it off and then your trip information uh, Long term, what do we got? 8.3 oops 8.3 liters per hundred kilometers over 600 kilometers uh, of driving. So that's that's pretty good uh, For the performance, I'll show you a 0 to 100 sprint uh, later on when we go for a drive But I think that's pretty reasonable I'm not a fan of having um, this climate control system down here. So you've got volume uh, there and then right next to it is your your heat and cooling um, for the left left and right. I'd rather have that as a bespoke, you know, a separate climate control panel. So you can have air recycle uh, for when you go into tunnels and things like that. An aircon button as well, so you can turn the aircon on and off rather than just have the heat and then integrated in with the volume. And then down below you've got this little pad uh, which has got your driving assist, so you can go in there and play with with all the settings for the, the lane keep assist and all that and then your climate control is this separate little button down here um, then that's where you can go in and turn the aircon off or put recycle um, on as well and you've got this has got uh, cooling seats which is quite nice oops yeah. turn those off just so it doesn't make too much noise um, cooling and heated seats for the passenger and driver and then a drive mode uh, sport and you've got an individual mode where you can configure your own settings with the available 
parameters, um, steering, you can you know go through comfort sport, comfort sport. Um, so that, that's handy to have. I like having individual modes. I think they come in handy. Uh, this one's got a wireless charging pad with a little cage there so you can stop your phone from moving about. Um, and then two USB-C charging ports. Very clean and clutter-free uh, center console here. And an, an adjustable water bottle holder, which is quite nice. Um, and it sort of flicks around. You can move it out of the way somehow. I can't remember how to do it. Oh, there we go. Um, and then you've got a bit more room there for a phone or something. And that spins around. 12 volt socket as well. In case you know you don't have USB-C cables yet, you can put an adapter in there and, and shove a normal USB in there. And then just lastly, I'll just move the steering wheel a bit. You've got this fully digital instrument cluster. Um, I've got it on this GTI uh, theme, uh, but you can go through and change that to various different themes. And then you can also configure the, I don't know about the left, but you can do the right and, you know, show G meter and acceleration and your speed, if you want a bigger speedo there. But I'll leave it on charge pressure just so we can watch that while we're driving. We'll check out the back seats. So keep in mind, I've got the seat in my position um, and I'm not tall, I'm 170 centimeters or so. Um, so that's, it's a pretty average room. It's not, it's not the most roomy hatchback in its class, but it's not the smallest either. Um, I could comfortably sit here for a long journey. Um, my head's nowhere near the ceiling. Um, in fact, it's got quite a big sort of concave section there for your head. Um, you do have to raise the, the headrests a bit so that, yeah so my head actually rests on it but yeah that's that's actually quite comfortable and then you've got climate control as well or temperature control uh, separate to the front but you don't have fan speed and then there's two more USB-C charging ports under the bottom there I'm not sure if you can see those um, and then a handy spot for your phone or whatnot um, you could even clip a, an iPad in there for the kids cup holders in the middle that flips up out of the way and then this little port goes through to the boot if you really need to uh, get in there while you're driving but there's a bit of a stuff around but yeah you can get through there that's a bit weird how the, <laughs> the headrest just goes through there um, obviously you get it out of the way but yeah a bit funny and then there's it actually goes through to the under the under the boot as well which is I don't know, it seems a bit strange. It should meet up a bit more flush, in my opinion. Carpeted bottle holders in the in the doors there, that's that's pretty nice. Um, normally there's just plastic, so if you've got a bottle in there, it doesn't rattle about. And in the back, you've got a decent sized boot. Some storage under the bottom. I've just got my tripod in there and a space saver spare wheel. Uh, but you could put you know a few loose items in there to stop them rolling about um, little pockets on the sides and it does have a 12 volt socket up the back there too which is pretty unique for for that for this style of car anyway you see those in suvs which are a bit more you know family friendly but that's that's nice to have that in a in a hatchback all right we'll go for a drive and um i'll show you what it's like uh, we'll test out the handling the performance and the uh the ride as well and see how comfortable it is and practical out on the highway, uh, the, the Golf GTI cruises beautifully. Um, it's just kicking over at about 1700 RPM, which is quite low for a four cylinder. Um, it's just, yeah, it's cruising really nicely. Obviously it's, it's, it's Volkswagen's a German brand, so they, they like their, their high speeds on the Autobahn. So you want something that's got really long legs, um, which this does. That also helps with economy and uh, emissions as well. Um, but in the comfort mode, which is the default mode, uh, driving mode, it's the gearbox light, likes to go up the gears as quick as possible. So it will jump straight into top gear as soon as it can. Um, and it will kind of stay there, even though, you know, you, you might feel more comfortable being in a lower gear. You can obviously just hit the paddle shifters 
and it will go into manual mode um, and then flick it back down uh, for D then you've also got an S mode as well which is kind of a sporty mode it will hold the revs a bit higher um, it'll change down uh, sooner as well um, when you're coming into corners and so on um, so it's good to have that option but I find it's a bit a little bit too aggressive understandably a little bit too aggressive for the for the road um, better if you're you know, doing some sporty driving in the mountains or something like that um, but yeah D it just seems to go straight into the top gear pretty quickly but I've also noticed even in sport mode um, it, it flicks over to, to S but you can still put it into D and it will go back down to that sort of um, you know modest setting where it will hunt for the top gear as quick as it can I think the main uh, well it's not really an issue but you know if you're coming into a corner just driving completely normally um, you turn into a right angle corner um, it'll it'll remain in, the, in a pretty high gear like third gear or even fourth gear and and pull you through um, the engine has a, a very wide torque band so it has no problem doing that it just in your your mind and, and what you know from previous cars that you've driven it feels like it needs to change down a gear um, and, and it kind of feels like the engines about to start laboring uh, just because the revs are so low um, you've got to really give it give it a bit of a push on the throttle to, to provoke it to, to kick down um, otherwise it'll just stay there and, and in fact even when you push it you know quite a quite a bit it'll just stay in the gear and just surge through with its wide torque band which is you know it's fair enough it's trying to save fuel um, I guess what I'm trying to say is it'll be nice to have a mode this is getting very complex now and very picky but it'll be nice to have a mode that's somewhere in between D and S so you don't want something that's so aggressive as S uh, but you don't want something that's so relaxed as D uh, where it will just hunt for, for absolute economy you do have an eco mode as well which is you know that, that makes it even or well, not worse but it, it's it's very sluggish um, on purpose the throttle the throttle response is very sluggish so you've got to push the puddle uh, the pedal puddle you've got to pu push the pedal quite a bit um, to to get some sort of response from the engine but again it's good to have that option there um, if you want it wind noise and and road roar is quite minimal um, this does feature Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sport tires um, I think they're quite good I mean, if Porsche's, Porsche is going to put them on the 911, I think it's probably good enough for a Golf as well. Um, there, yeah, there's not much road noise. It's quite quiet in here. There's a bit of noise around the mirror I can hear. But, you know, that, that's really nitpicking, um, especially for this class of car. Remembering this is a performance model. It's not an absolute economy-focused model. The ride comfort, just going over those little road connections there and patches in the road. I'll just get into this lane because it seems to be a bit more patchy. Um, look, it's 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 sporty, but it's, I wouldn't describe it as stiff or even firm. It's um, there's some models out there that are that are quite rigid, um, whereas this is not so bad. It's it's totally you can live with this every day. I mean, if you've just jumped out of a a uh, an S class or something like that, and you jump into this, you'd probably think it's a bit firm, but I think for this this type of car, this is a sporty hot hatch after all. It's not trying to be an S class. I think this is totally acceptable. I might have a bit of an opportunity here to give it some beans on the highway. So I'll show you the uh, overtaking performance. There's no one behind me. I'm going 80 kilometers an hour. Floor it. Takes a little bit to kick down. It goes well. It's uh, for what it is. It, it it goes really nicely. And you just probably saw then two bar of boost pressure <laughs> um, as we uh, as we overtook some people. It does dance around a bit that that boost gauge actually. You only need to touch the throttle, uh, and it will. I'm looking at the road, so don't worry about what I'm doing. I'm trying to show the camera on that. Um, but yeah, you just just push the foot just a little bit, and it will start to build boost quite quickly I don't know how accurate that is but to me that's building boost very very low in the RPM which is impressive out on the country roads um, we'll encounter a few bumps and potholes and patches and stuff along here and we can test out the uh, the ride so firstly I notice there's not too many rattles or squeaks from the cabin it's all pretty strong it's pretty well built um, 
yeah, nothing moves about, which is pretty difficult for a, especially for a hot hatch, because everything is quite tight. I mean, the suspension is quite tight. Um, so that obviously uncovers the potential for rattles. Whereas this, no, they've, they've done really well in making sure that uh, rattles and things are, uh, are minimal. This is a very coarse surface road as well. So again, the, the road roar is not too bad. I don't need to raise my voice too much. And through here. Yeah, it feels rubbery. It's It's got this sort of firmness to it, but it's not rigid or stiff. Like it doesn't really jar you or anything when you're going over the sharper bumps. So again, I just had to put my foot pretty much halfway down to cause it to, to kick down. Otherwise it would have just dragged me through that higher gear. Um, I mean, peak torque is available from just 1600 RPM. So you don't need revs to, you know, if you look at the scenery, it does move quickly, although the engine might seem like it's laboring. You're still moving quite, the, the progress is still impressive in other words. It does have the, uh, the trademark PARP in between the upshifts, um, especially sort of in the middle of the rev range, not so much really high up in the revs. Just try to show you that. Get past this truck. using the uh, the paddle shifters I'll put it back into D um, actually we'll put it into S and I'll just show you that There's definitely a few bumps here so it changed down gear just then as we slowed down it, it sort of blipped the throttle a little bit and changed down for me whereas in D it would have stayed in a pretty high gear yeah so this is a pretty poor road poor quality road but see even those bumps it, it thuds rather than crashes so that's um that's really good I, I a lot of hot hatches would crash and bang going over all this but this is just it's it's definitely shaking and it's it's definitely firm but it's 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 a soft impact some more yeah that's that's really good for this style of car um, you couldn't ask for much more there is a little bit of uh, torque steer just a little bit and I mean that in the in the, the proper uh, meaning of the word. So that's that sort of axle wind up in that it will throw a bit extra power as it catches each axle catches up, uh, the left and right I mean, um, as it's as the power is delivered, um, as opposed to you know a lot of people think torque steer is just wheel spinning, but that, that's not that's not the case. This does have a locking differential at the front, um, it's front wheel drive obviously, um, which you know it, does, it doesn't just mean it will spin both wheels. And you can do crazy burnouts and all that sort of stuff. It'll um, it means when you come around of the out of a corner, it won't spin away the power to the inside wheel. It, it it's locked. Both the front, the both the left and right are locked together. So if that inside wheel wants to spin, well, it's up to the outside wheel. If that's got too much traction, then it will just propel you around the corner um, and, and catapult you around. If you are very aggressive with the with the throttle and you've got the stability control turned off, um, you can end up being in sort of like an equivalent of power sliding a front wheel drive which is probably what you might know as torque steer whereas both wheels are spinning and it's just just powdering the uh the tires um it, it will it'll do that as well if you want it to so for this section we'll uh i've just got to tape the microphone cable down a bit because it might rattle around it's just under here uh, there we go, that should do it. Um, there might be a bit of traffic down here today, but I do have a backup. Um, but this should give us an idea of how this thing handles, uh, especially coming back up, because, because we can really put that uh, locking differential to the test. But yeah, that low range torque is, is really impressive. It just pulls it through any gear uh, at any speed, pretty much. Good brakes, even though they're not huge Brembo multi-piston things, they're just 
uh, nice sporty brakes. This thing only weighs about 1400 kilograms, which really helps. You can hear that pop as you uh, upshift. And it is even pops and bangs on the overrun as well. Now remember, I've got the stability controls turned on still. Um, there is a sport mode for the stability control, so you can put it into sport so it will allow some slip and play. Um, in fact, we'll do that now. You've just got to go into the vehicle settings. See, again, if you just had a button for this down here, you could just hit it and it'd be, it'd be done. But go into vehicle, exterior, swipe across, brakes, ESC, sport. And it'll give us some play. Um, one thing that sort of suggests to me that this is not a track car or not a hardcore model is the fact that it will automatically upshift. It won't bounce off the rev limiter. Now, you might think, oh, well, you know, only hooligans and derelicts want to bounce off the rev limiter, but that's not necessarily true because if you're on a track and you, you're, you're at a corner, you're, you're in second gear, you're flying down a, a bit of a straight and you're just about to, to hit the brakes, um, but you don't need to upshift to third, you might just bounce on the rev limiter just for literally one second or 1.5 seconds or something. Um, and then you're hard on the brakes, then you're ready to go straight out of the corner in second gear, remaining in second gear. Um, whereas this will automatically upshift. Okay, going back up now. I've still got the ESC in sport mode. Down to second here. Got full power. See, it's trying to spin the wheel a little bit, the inside wheel, but it, the differential just won't let it, which is good because it's giving me acceleration. Again. And even the steering wheel is staying pretty, like it's not tugging and pulling me all around the road. It's actually helping with stability and, you know, directional stability as well. There is a bit of fake sound coming through inside. It's not true uh, sound of the engine, um, which you know always annoys me. Um, I, again, I don't mind a quiet engine. There's nothing wrong with a, a, an engine that's it just went into D automatically then too. So that's a little bit annoying. Um, I didn't touch anything. It just could sense that I wasn't being engaged with the gears, so it just went into D by itself. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with a quiet engine, but it can still sound good. It gives off a good note, even if it is quiet. So I'll just let it go all the way into the red line. See, it upshifted by itself, even though we're in manual mode. But I guess this is not a hardcore hot hatch. This is not meant to be, you know, a full-on track day car or anything like that it's just meant to be a fun Sunday cruiser um, that you can take in the mountains or you know roads like this and have a bit of fun so again that was full power and it just sorted out the front end for me and let me get maximum acceleration away from the the corner there is a bit of gentle push understeer when you're really pushing it. Um, and that's kind of a trade-off for the, the more comfortable ride. So it's, you know, it's acceptable level. Again, this is not a hardcore model. It's a little bit of a chirp from the inside wheel then, just as it sorted itself out. But yeah, if this didn't have a, a differential, a locking differential, it would have spun away the, wheel, the power, uh, you know, most of the corners back there um, with the stability in this mode as well. It would have still slipped a bit. I'll just turn it right off and see, see what that makes any, see if that makes any difference. 
give it some beans. See, so it went to spin the, uh, the inside wheel, but then it obviously connected up and it wouldn't let it go any further. Well, it sent the power to the other wheel. See, so then it was trying to spin, but it's, it's not. It's giving me acceleration instead, which is good. So again, you don't need to uh, be in the lower gears, uh, as we saw with in normal mode, in comfort mode. It's got heaps of torque low down. So I'm in third gear now, going up a steep hill, full boost, 2.1 bar, and it just picks up speed with um, with no labouring and no no hesitation really. Um, it's a little bit boggy, but you know I'm, I'm giving it heaps of power. Heaps of throttle, sorry, in third gear going up, a, going up a hill from low revs. So, you know, what do you expect? Um, the only thing that could do it better would be an electric car, which is obviously just instant power. In terms of 0 to 100, um, I have tested this on the private road uh, in 6.06 seconds. Um, and then with launch control, uh, with the stability control completely switched off, and then I did 6.07 with the stability uh, with without launch control, stability control turned off as well. Just flattening it in S mode like this. Um, I also did some runs in manual mode, um, and it produced very similar results um, because it spins the wheels and sometimes just hangs while it's while it's in first gear spinning the wheels still. And you can click second gear, and it will just help push it along. Um, I found it a bit more consistent using manual mode, so I think I did 6. 1-0, um, 6.11, um, but yeah, it was, it was quickest result of the day was 6.06 um, with automatic mode in S uh, auto mode uh, with the stability control turned off. Okay, we've got a nice little straight bit here. Um, I've got the V-Box connected up. It is very cloudy at the moment and, and you know, almost in the, in the clouds. Um, so we'll see what it does. Hit go, launch control, just hit the brake, uh, full, full on the brake, and then full throttle. Yeah, see, it kind of hesitated, uh, or it hung in first gear for a bit too long. Um, and it's, yeah, it sort of just spun the wheels a fair bit. But obviously it's it's pretty greasy conditions right now. Um, let's see what it did here. So 7.6 that one was. Um, but yeah, that's that's a pretty pretty poor sort of circumstances that it's in. I'll try again. Uh, see if I can find a better a better spot. Okay, here's a little grippy spot. It's got a bit of fresh tarmac, so we'll see what it can do. was better um, it hooked up a lot better um, but it still had that weird hang where it sort of sat in first gear for a bit too long whereas it could have just punched away second gear and it um, probably would have resulted in a better better time I can just see it there okay so that one did 7.0 6.98 um, that was a lot better but again if it shifts up to second gear uh, smoother and a bit sooner um, it does result in a quicker time but when I did the uh, performance tests um, on the private road uh, which had a lot more grip than that um, it didn't sort of hang as 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 long in first gear it sort of just red line just for a, for a second and then punched uh, second gear and it got away to a good start um, whereas on on sort of less than perfect surfaces yeah, it definitely seems to hang around in first gear for too long and it gets a bit confused before it upshifts to second. But anyway, uh, Volkswagen claims 6.3 seconds uh, and, we've, and we've got 6.06 .06 seconds. So yeah, definitely a very quick car, especially for one that's only got 180 kilowatts compared with a lot of the rivals now that have, you know, 200 plus. I'll just try that again for you. Uh, the same spot and I'll put it in manual mode this time and I'll upshift a little bit earlier. It is sprinkling still. That was probably a 
a little bit too early um, but you know it does have a lot of torque low down so it, it, it seemed like it might have been a bit early but I can just see there it's done six something so that's just done 6.54 so it was a lot quicker half a second quicker same spot same sort of conditions uh, using manual mode so yeah what a cracking little hot hatch um, it's not too hardcore in any particular area instead it's a, a great balance a great all-rounder there are more hardcore options out there obviously um, such as the i30n um, that's still got pretty good practicality in terms of space um, might even have more rear space rear seat space than this uh, but yeah it's definitely louder and just more flamboyant and the suspension is firmer whereas this kind of walks a nice balance between all all mediums and you can still use it every day and still have a lot of fun